Omen. Um, I'm not really that much of a dancer. <laughs> but but uh, I'll, I'll be talking about accelerated mobile pages uh, today. Okay, so, okay. Uh, press down. So, uh, I'll just start with it. Um, what is AMP? AMP is actually a new technology that was created by Google and it's now an open source project. So you might say Google is you know, uh, a big company, uh, but in the past year, the contributions to the AMP project is about more than 70% uh, from people outside Google and about 20% from people uh, inside Google. So uh, it's, it's becoming more of an open source project than uh, controlled by a big organization. And also, uh, there's Bing. Bing AMP is going to be out soon, so it's not just on Google. Um, so let me give you a brief example of how it works. Uh, best is to show you on, let me see. OK. So AMP is, as the, as the name says, is accelerated mobile pages. And that means it only works when you're on mobile. So let's say you move into a iPhone, and then you search, let's say, World News. Okay, and you get these uh, search results with this uh, lightning icon beside the result itself. This indicates that this is an AMP article or AMP page. When you click on it, the page will load instantly. Another cool feature is that you can jump from uh, page to page uh, just by scrolling like this. So you're moving through the AMP carousel here, and then you're going from article to article from your search result. So instead of going to the page, and, and then let's say you want to see another result, you go press back, and then you press on another result, you can just scroll as you would uh, a carousel. Like this, so it's, it's very cool. So, but it seems like BBC is quite has quite a number of AMP pages for this result, so it's showing up. But it's uh, generally a bit more varied. Okay, share. I'm oh, not sure. Done. I think it's present. Okay. Uh, so another another feature. Why uh, someone would be interested in AMP pages is that it's lightning fast. It's instantaneous. That means the moment you see the result and then you click on it, uh, it loads instantly and you don't have to wait for the page to load. So there was a survey done where it says about more than 50% of the user will leave your website if uh, it takes longer than three seconds to load. And later on the next page, I'll show you that for companies such as Amazon, Walmart, Google, um, load time does matter. And the faster you can make your site, the better uh, business uh, results you can get. And so how, how, does, how, how are AMP pages so fast? So and, and this uh, can be answered with uh, caching here. So you can see when you enter your search results, you're here. So when you, so this is when the search results come up. Let's say you type World News, and then the search page is here. And while you are looking at the results, like thinking of what to click, um, it preloads, the browser preloads the AMP pages, and then uh, it pre-renders it in the background. So once, you're, once you've decided on which page to go, um, the, the content is ready, and you can view it straight away. Then you might ask, if, if I'm loading so many Pages and won't, won't it like hold my data, and won't it you know uh, make my mobile data explode? And and the answer is no, and the reason is because um, the cache only uh, preloads the first viewport plus a little bit extra, and it only uh, loads necessary assets and it doesn't run uh, any custom JavaScript on the on the page itself. So that means uh, we can preload maybe. Uh, five, ten pages um, while you're looking at the result and you don't have to worry about your data exploding. So how do you, how do you get this uh, technology 
uh, implemented on your website. And this is done through uh, three uh, components. The first one is called the MHTML, uh, which is special syntax that you need to write to allow for the page to be validated and enter the cache. And second one is uh, called AMP JavaScript, which is sort of like uh, web components where you can't really write your own JavaScript, uh, but you can, re you can use uh, pre-written JavaScript uh, modules that is written in the AMP project and apply them to your page. Uh, I'll give you an example later. And last one is the MP cache, which I have ex uh, explained uh, earlier. So how does these three, uh, wh why are these three necessary and how do you actually implement them on top of the current stack that you have? So let's start with uh, the JavaScript portion. So over here, you can see a very basic MP page. And it is, it's very similar to a normal JavaScript uh, HTML doc type, except that now you have the lightning box sign here, uh, the char set, the canonical, the viewport, and then as well as the boilerplate code. So it's really very similar to how you normally write uh, your HTML code. It's just that now you have to also comply to spe uh, special uh, M syntax to, to, be, to be valid for AMP. And next, you can add your CSS uh, in this style uh, text. So one limitation of um, MHTML is that you cannot, uh, you have to write all your CSS inline, and it must be below 50 kilobytes in size. So OK, there's, there's a lot of things going on. Uh, as in, there's a lot of rules that are in place. And these rules are in place so that um, the, the browser can cache it properly. So let's say if uh, we have a website that has uh, 200 kilobytes uh, CSS file, well, and, and then you had to preload that, so that would be a problem for uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the user uh, who, who needs to uh, spend uh, mobile data to get the site loaded while the, while the search is going on, even if the user do not uh, visit the site itself. And next is the JavaScript, which is the M components. So one example I have here is the carousel. So what you have to do is add in the JavaScript uh, in the head. And after that, you can just use the uh, component in the uh, HTML. So it's, it's really quite simple. It's like using, a, it's like using Bootstrap or using any uh, web component itself. So it's like. Uh, you just have to reskin it to suit your need, and then uh, you're good to go. And after you have built your page in the AMP HTML and AMP JavaScript, you need to validate it that to ensure that it's valid. And then after it's valid, you can you can you can use these tools here to check if you have valid uh, AMP. Basically, uh, I guess I don't wanna go through each one of them. If you, I can give you the slides later. So you just need to make sure that it's validated to ensure that you are complying to the rules that has been put in place. And next, after you've built the page, right? So how do you actually get it um, seen by the crawler and how do you get it published? It's through uh, linking it up to your uh, canonical pages. That means, let, let's say you have a website and it's talking about, it's a full blog, for example. And you have an article that you write about uh, maybe food in Singapore. And, and then you want to make an AMP page out uh, for that version. So how do you, you know, link it up? Is that you have to add the uh, MHTML uh, link, uh, like this syntax, to your existing uh, code, and then <laughs> In the M page itself, you add the canonical uh, uh, tag to it, and that's, that's all you kind of need to do. And so, in summary of how you get M on your website, is just to build the M compliant page, link the page to your canonical, and then get it cached. So, so once you do all this, you can get the instantaneous uh, speeds that I showed you uh, previously. So 
actually is quite simple, right? But maybe not so much, also depending on your stack. So how do you actually build this M compliant page? It's, it's, it's up to you. Because in the end, what you need to do is, once the crawler reaches your site, it needs to, it needs to see a valid uh, M HTML code. So let's say you're using uh, Vue or Angular or React or, or Ruby or whatever. Um, you just need to make sure that when the URL is hit, uh, it is valid. So any, any, any way you want to do it, you want to, you want to write it page by page and host it on S3 and then uh, just expose that URL, that's fine as well. Uh, as long as the end result of whatever you've done uh, results in a valid code, then, uh, then, then, then it will benefit from M uh, results, M search results. So there, there are some pros and cons of um, using M. Um, we can talk about the pros first, the faster page load, I think you all know. Better SEO is another, res another result of better page load. And Google gives a bit of stronger SEO to M pages, just because they can. <laughs> and, and also they have an M new carousel, which I showed you just now, which is only for M pages. So if you have a non M page, and then uh, you will not be on that carousel. So you kind of miss out on a little bit on that aspect. But yeah, uh, for cons, sometimes depending on how you have implemented it, you can have a bit of reduced session time because fast in, fast out, right? If you can enter a website very easily, you, you can also exit very easily. Uh, and also maybe depending, some, some, it depends on the, your, your site itself. Like if the pages that you implemented your M code on, is something that that maybe is easy to that doesn't have a good linkage to the rest of your website, then maybe you might have uh, higher bounce rates. But in the end, uh, it really depends on on a case by case basis. So you have to see you have to do your own experiments to kind of gauge how it will benefit your company. And some of the challenges uh, my face and my company face when we implemented this was that. The first channel was static layouting because um, you don't have, you cannot uh, get your images to be dynamic in terms of aspect ratio. What it means is that the position, the size of the image and the aspect ratio must kind of be known uh, beforehand or else you might risk having uh, some empty space between your images and your content. And this is to cater for the preloading that 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 uh, that, uh, that the cache the cache uh, do for you. And CSS is uh, inline and size bound. So if you have a uh, crazy imported uh, like layouting components where you import the whole layout component for every single uh, sub component, then maybe you cannot do that for M pages. And lastly, is uh, no custom JavaScript, which which means uh, you need to be a little bit creative. I, I, I saw a video where the developer was using the accordion component to create like uh, drop downs. So even though this accordion component is only used for, you know, as an accordion, but you can reskin it to uh, be more like a, a component that you want. Okay, and then some of the useful links on the AMP uh, project that you can use to kind of uh, validate your code and build and get some guides on how you can uh, build proper uh, AMP pages. And additionally, uh, no, no uh, B2C page is complete without analytics, right? So AMP itself has um, good support for uh, Google Analytics as well as uh, external uh, analytics, if you have uh, your own uh, analytics engine running, you can uh, hook that up as well. And as well as A-B testing, if you are working with a lot of, uh, B if you're working in B2C and you want to uh, implement A-B testing, uh, there's M experiments that uh, it comes inbuilt and relatively easy to uh, implement. Yeah, and that's about it. Any questions on AMP? Okay, thank you. <laughs>